Hello friends, welcome back. This is a part 3 of this video series. In part 1 of this series, you have seen how to buy a domain name. In second part, we have shown how to point a domain name to an IP address of the server. Now, in third part, you are going to learn how to configure and host a website on a VPS server. This video tutorial is presented by Surgeon Sami powered by itcoc.com and you are watching this video on YouTube channel Peter Kreis. So without wasting any more time, let us start our tutorial. Welcome back. I am going to start the tutorial from where we have left in our previous video. In the previous video, you have seen how to point that domain name to your server IP address. Now, once again, let us go to the command prompt and type ping and the domain name that is sysofoff.com and as you can see, we are able to ping the domain name which is pointing to our server IP address. Now, I am going to minimize the command prompt window. Let us open a run dialog box and type mstsc. Ok, now press enter. This will open up a remote desktop connection window. As you can see, we have already saved our server IP address and the user credentials from which we are going to access our server. So let's click on connect. Now click yes for the certificate. It takes few seconds to connect to the server. Ok, now we are on the server. When you log into the server, the server manager opens automatically. If it doesn't open automatically, you can click on the server manager from the taskbar. Now from the server manager, click on local server. This will show us a local configuration of this server. We are going to turn off Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration for the administrative user. Click where it says on. This will open up a security configuration window. Click on off for the administrator and then click on OK. Now let's go to manage. And from here we are going to install a web server role for our VPS server. So now let's click on add roles and features. This will open up the add roles and features wizard window. Now let's click next. On the select installation type window, select the first option and then click next. Here we do not have to do anything, just click next. Now we are on the select server role window. From here we are going to select our web server role. Let's move down and here you can see web server. Click on the checkbox. A window will pop up. Just click on add features. OK. Now click next. This brings us to select features window. Here we are going to select .NET Framework 3.5 and from the .NET Framework 4.5 drop down, we are going to select ASP.NET 4.5. Now let us click next. Here the wizard is showing some information about the web server. Let us click next. Now we are on select role services. Now if you see over here, some roles are already selected. Now I am going to select few more things which I required. From the performance section, I am going to select dynamic content compression. From the security section, select basic authentication. Also I am going to select IP and domain restriction. Now let's move little bit more down. Here you can see application development. Expand the application development. From here, I am going to select multiple options. Select .NET Extensibility 3.5, 4.5, ASP.NET 3.5. Click on Add Feature, ASP.NET 4.5. Now let's move little bit downwards. OK. Also select Server Side Includes. We are not going to select FTP as we don't require it in this tutorial. In Management Tools, IS Management Console is already selected. So you do not have to do anything over here. Let's click Next. Now we are on Confirm Installation section. Click on the checkbox where it says Restart the destination server automatically if required. Let's click on Yes. And now click on Install. The installation will take few minutes. So I am going to pause the video and resume it in between so that you can see the installation progress. Now the installation has been completed. Let us click on Close. OK. From the server manager, let's click on tools and open internet information service manager. OK, let's close the server manager as we don't require it anymore. So now we are on the internet information service manager. Let's expand the server node. If a window pops up, just click no. Currently the server node is selected. From the action pane window, let's click on get a new web platform components. This opens up a web page. From here we are going to download Microsoft Web Platform Installer. So let's click on free download and then click on run. Click yes. Depending on your server configuration, it takes few minutes. 
for the web platform installer to be installed. So just hold on for a minute. I have paused the video and resume it so that you don't have to wait for a long time. After the installation, the web platform installer starts automatically. In the search bar, type URL, then hit enter. You can see there are multiple modules are available. We are going to select URL rewrite and then click on add. OK. Now click on install. Click on I accept. The installation process will take few minutes depending on your server configuration. So I am going to pause the video and resume it once it is completed. Ok so the installation is completed. Let's click on finish. Then click on exit. Let's close the internet explorer. Also we are going to close the IS manager and reopen it so that the changes will reflect. On the start menu click on administrative tools. Here you can see a shortcut for internet information service. We are going to pin this into our taskbar. Ok. Now close the administrative tools window. Once again let's open the internet information service. Maximize it. Now expand the server node. Ok. Just click no. Now here on the server wide configuration you can see the URL rewrite module which we have installed. Let's go to sites folder. Expand the folder. Here you can see there is one default website which is already pre-configured. But we are going to create a new website. So let's minimize the IS. And let's go back to our local system. Minimize the remote desktop connection window. From here I am going to copy the website content from my local system to our remote VPS server. So let us copy this folder. Ok. Now let's close this folder. Open the remote desktop connection. And we are going to paste the folder which we have copied. Right click and paste. Now let's open the folder from the taskbar. Open C drive. INET pub. And here we are going to create a new folder. Right click. New. Folder. We have given the name to this folder. Sites. Inside the sites folder we are going to create one more folder. And the name of this folder will be sysoff. Ok. So the folder has been created. Now we are going to copy our website content. Inside the folder which we have created. So let's click on copy. Or you can click on cut and then paste it on the folder which we have created. OK. Select the checkbox and click on continue. Now let's copy the path of this folder by pressing Ctrl C. Close the folder. And once again we are going to open Internet Information Service Manager. Let's go to sites. Right click on the sites folder and then select add website. In the site name dialog box type the name of your site on the physical path dialog box click on the button and then select the path of your website. In my case it is in C drive, INET pub, sites folder and I am going to select the folder sysoff which is the folder of our website and then click OK. In the hostname dialog box we are going to type our domain name that is sysofoff.com. Now click OK. Here you can see the website which we have just created. Let's click on our website. From the action pane window click on bindings. On the site binding window click on add. Here in the hostname dialog box we are going to type www.sysofoff.com. Now click OK. Click close. OK. Now let's right click on the website and click on explore. This will open a root folder of our website. Here you can see there is a page with the name of default.aspx. Now let's close this folder. Now we are going to open the default document module. As you can see a default.aspx is already added over here. So we do not require to add it once again. But if your default page name is different then you have to add that page name over here manually. To add the default document manually from the action pane window click on add and then add the default document name. Now I don't require this to be added because it's already there. So I'm going to click on cancel. Now once again let's click on our website. OK. Now let's open the URL rewrite module which we have installed. From the action pane window click on add rule. From the add rule window click on canonical domain name. Now from the drop down menu select the primary host name. In our case it will be www.sysoff.com. Now let's click OK. By doing this we have added a URL rewrite rule. Now if anybody tries to access our website by using sysoff.com, it will be automatically redirected to www.sysoff.com. So we are back on our website. 
In the action pane window, you can see there is an option to browse the website. We are going to click on the first link. There you can see the Internet Explorer has been opened. Let's click on it. Here in the URL bar, if you see, we have accessed sysoff.com and it has been automatically redirected to www.sysoff.com. Now let us minimize the Internet Explorer, also minimize the Internet Information Service and we are going to go back to our local machine and from there we are going to browse this website. Let us open the Chrome browser, new tab, let me type the domain name that is sysoff.com. Ok, now hit enter. So as you can see, we are successfully able to access our website without any issues. Now let's minimize the Chrome browser. So it completes our this video tutorial. Don't forget to watch our next video tutorial which will be very informative for you. Hello friends, thank you for watching our this video tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to receive an email update whenever we post a new video. Share it with your technical IT friends. If you are facing any technical problem or have any suggestions, post your comment here or catch me on Google Plus, Hangout, Facebook, Twitter and Skype. This video tutorial is presented by Sajjan Sabi powered by ITZOZ.com and you are watching this video on YouTube channel Ptech Rise.